as we said, man, what an amazing pleasure to, to welcome Chris Long to the podcast. This guy is a legend, not only what he achieved on the football field, but what he does for others. Uh, his kindness towards other people is so inspiring. Charitable person, philanthropic person. He's impacted lives all over the globe. Donated his entire 2017 salary from the Philadelphia Eagles to charity in the effort in part to bolster and improve education in America abroad. His foundation benefits waterboys.org, which build, builds wells in, uh, for communities in East Africa. I've long been a fan of this guy, even though, unfortunately, he played at the University of Virginia. <laughs> Um, he is also the second Marty Smith podcast guest in the past three weeks that named his boy Waylon. So we're going to get along just fine. Uh, who did you, who else did you have on? Uh, we had Larry Fleet on the okay. burgeoning country music star. Well, Chris, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with Larry's work yet, but this no, dude. No, well now I'm in. He named his kid Waylon. He must have good influences. Uh, he can go. Uh, all right, we're going to just go ahead and, and put it out there to your point just a moment ago. We'll start with a. This controversial topic that I broached that I did not know was controversial. <laughs> About 10 or so days ago, I tweeted, water's water. And one of the first people to respond with, that is the most bullshit thing I've ever heard in my life, <laughs> was you. So so go ahead and walk us through your response to my ignorance. Well, so here's the thing, Marty, and I'm a big fan of yours too, man. I, you know, so I, I wanted to help a, help a, a, a guy out that I have a lot of respect for. And, you know, it's just dangerous. It's a dangerous narrative that all water tastes the same. Guys, Marty, how much do you weigh? 165 pounds. Okay, so I don't do the quick <laughs> math on that, but I'd say you're about 130 pounds of water. Okay. 110 pounds of water. So, like, you're not just pumping Aquafina in that, in that engine. You, you talk about race cars a lot, right? Like, I do. the fuel matters. You can and I know there might be a sponsor on this great podcast, so I don't want to step on any toes, but we're not talking about Deer Park here. Like, put some Aquapana in that bad boy. You know, nobody's going to call you bougie. It's not going to ruin your image. You could do some Aquapana. You could, Liquid Death still looks kind of tough, but it's like, it's a... Uh, it's um, upper class water, dude. Invest Liquid death in sponsors that. Everybody. Yeah, it, invest in that seventy percent of your body, Marty, that you run on every day. It's water. So I got to be honest with you, brother. Uh, what spawn? All right, Travis. I'm just going to put it out there. What spawned the tweet in the first place was I had just gotten back from the gym on top of being hungover because I was in Nashville, Tennessee. And when yeah. you're in Nashville, Tennessee, you're just hungover. You're hungover. <laughs> And I had I went to this coffee shop and I got two cans of Liquid Death, mm -hmm. and I was like, "This is the greatest water I've." Ever. I mean, I don't I didn't know if it was the freezing cold ass can, yeah, or I didn't know what it was, but I was like, "This water has fooled me. This water is better than other water." <laughs> yeah. And so that's where the whole thing came from. And I, all right, it's well, I, it's I'm true, and it's true, and there's no BPAs in Liquid Death, which I don't know what that stands for, but we don't want <laughs> them. Yeah, we don't want, hey, dude, we don't want any BPAs, Marty. So, you know, the the liquid death being in aluminum, anybody that knows Gatorade and that was born before, you know, 1998 has probably had Gatorade in a can before. Mm -hmm. Gatorade in a can before is like the nectar of the gods, dude. Gatorade in a plastic bottle, it's variable. How long has it been out? What flavor is it? You put any flavor in a can uh, if it's Gatorade, it tastes amazing. And it's the same thing for water. It's the aluminum that really unlocks the potential of that water. It unlocked mine. I felt like a, I felt like a world-class athlete when yes. I had that stuff. Yes, in my, you did, in my dude. Blood. I do, as too. You were, as you were explaining that, I'm looking at Wesley's face. Wes, well, you were completely flummoxed by everything Chris just said. No, I've had uh, I've had liquid death. I've never had the aqua pancake. Aqua pancake. It, it doesn't taste like pancakes. It tastes like um, that and Evian. They're kind of in the class of like if you milked a cloud or you or you milked water, and you got like the, the finest distillate of that of that like uh, that wa that cloud that was hovering over the Alps. Like that's what Aquapana. Actually, that's a, that's an Italian water. Um, where Evian, I think, is what is that Switzer Switzerland? It sounds French. <laughs> I've had Evian before, and it's, it tastes like I'm not allowed to be drinking it. Like, it, it tastes like I shouldn't be having access to that water. But you do have access. Don't fall for the, you know, this is, these are limitations we put on ourselves. Like, Travis. you know, why? All the bullshit we spend. Can I do that? Sorry. 
all the BS that we spend on on water or on on expensive stuff that has nothing to do with water. Like I said, we run on seventy percent water. Invest in the water that's in your body. Travis, pull up. I know you have it right there. What was Chris's top six? I mean, this was right off. Chris's the cuff list too. is this solid. This was amazing that you Thank just you. fired this away. Well, I have a water charity, so I got to be ready. This list is correct. It's a uh, number one aquapana. Drinking it, drinking a cloud. Try it. Yeah, it's expensive. Number two, liquid death. No BPA's. Daily driver. Three, Ev- Evian. If you milked water. Four, Mountain Valley. Just a powerhouse. Five, Smart Water. Ut- ut- utilitarian family water. A six, Fiji. Yeah. Right. Fiji can be salt. a little overrated, you know. But. but it has a square bottle. See, that's one. It's that's another bottle. part of this debate, bro. Is I was like, is it the packaging that's messing with me right now? Because I am, I am a complete sucker for a beautiful craft beer can and i'm yes. a complete sucker for a beautiful like uh pinot noir or cabernet <laughs> yeah, wine dude. label i am a yeah. sucker dude and i want a, is this water messing with me i think it is messing with you but it's okay allow yourself to be messed with on this thing i mean there's a reason that they have the bandwidth for the packaging because these are really these are dialed in operations you know what i mean so uh chances are they're doing something right and i just want to say this about smart water um, smart water is a good water, not a great water. I added it to the list because I have to drink a lot of it. My wife always has a six pack of smart water. Something about suburban moms, they're really drawn to smart water. So I wanted to include that for the suburban moms. Shout out to them. Yeah, dude. Yeah, shout it's out. consistent. You know what? It, you know what it is? The, the smart water it has the cap, so you don't have to twist it off. The all caps time. Is you, tedious. You, you do the caps? No, nah, man. Yeah, the cap is the big thing. Travis, you lazy ass. Squirrel. Don't screw the lid, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody put a uh, twist-off cap from one of the smart waters on one of the twist-off caps on a bottle of wine recently. <laughs> that was one of the more ingenuitive things I saw on social media. Where recently. were you? Where, where was that? That's pretty That's pretty awesome. They're having a good time wherever that happened. It was my, al- my algorithm. Uh, okay. I guess they know I like to drink water and I like to drink yeah. wine every now and then. Yep, uh-huh. Well, uh, since we have you on here, dude, you played collegiately at such a high level. Yep. Um, All-American, had a tremendous pro career, but we're big-time college football guys, college basketball guys, and all of us are just like WTF with college sports right now. It's the Wild West. There's so much change. It's It's a seismic shift moment here. So as someone who lived it and would have made a fortune off NIL had yeah, you would had have made it a little, little played, bit. Yeah. What's your perspective on everything that's going on right now? So I so I think it's tough cuz I don't know that there is a right answer. You know, like everybody knows the right answer is to get these kids paid. In my opinion, like they generate a ton of revenue. They bust their ass. You know, the football players are risking, you know, their health to a higher degree than a lot of other collegiate athletes. So, you know, when I see these football players signing, you know, five-figure deals rolling up on campus, I'm like, yeah, it might look a little gaudy that the kid decided to buy a watch with it, uh, but he deserves that autonomy. He deserves that, that opportunity to spend it on whatever. I mean, there's a lot of kids that are, are, are taking care of family back home. There's a lot of kids that, you know, maybe like me that – didn't need the money and it was a luxury and maybe they're just enjoying it. Um, The bottom line is it really doesn't matter how they're spending it. It's that they have the choice to spend it how they want to spend it like the rest of Americans because, you know, I really do believe in, in, you know, you know, having a free market and having the ability to go out and earn what, what the market will pay you. And these kids are doing that now in the immediacy, Marty, as you know, it is the wild west. That's the best term to, you know, because, There's going to be a lot of bad actors trying to break into the game and take advantage of kids. That's scary. You know, they got to get that figured out. These kids got to have their paperwork straight. They got to have the right people advocating for them. They got to have representation, right, to protect that money and protect their likeness and their in their their image, because there's always sharks and the people that kind of take advantage. but I think a lot of the growing pains we're seeing are going to be necessary, whether we're going to do it now or 15 years down the road, like the floodgates had to open. And I really do believe it'll sort itself out. I also think with like conference realignment and all this stuff, man, it, it's so hurtful to me as an ACC, like Raycom sports guy, like Amen. watch Doc Walker and all this stuff. Like 
Dan this Bonner, is gonna, baby. Yeah, dude. This Let's is gonna go. be this is gonna be way different. Um, but it's just like anything in sports. Like when it happens, I think everybody's shocked. But the thing that we love is still there. It's the game, dude. You know, and and football. As long as there's an opportunity for people to play it, people are gonna go play it because it's been a it's been a doorway to a better life for a lot of people, and uh, it's also a hell of a lot of fun, and it'll be competitive. Um, sure, I'm worried about Virginia. I don't know where we end up in this whole thing. Maybe you have an opinion. Um, but I also think that like eventually this stuff gets gets sorted out and we get used to it. USC is going to look normal in the Big Ten in like three years, dude. Yep. That's just the way these things go, dude. I mean, there's change and then we adapt. My neighbor played football at Virginia Tech and is from West Virginia. And we were talking about the Mountaineers and the Hokies and trying to figure out where schools like that end up in this model that looks like it's headed towards a power two. I mean, do you feel like there's any solution? Because 15 years ago, people would have been clamoring to add West Virginia and Virginia right. Tech to the power two. And I feel like if there is a solution, you know, maybe relegation is that answer. But I just don't know if conferences will, will go for it. I don't know if people go for relegation. I don't know what the solution would be. I've seen things floated like where there's these I mean, obviously, everybody thinks that there's either going to be this big, this big conference is made up of the SEC and the Big Ten, or it's like these power two, and then everybody else. I think there's too much pageantry, too much tradition, and too much that we love about our schools. I mean, your neighbor or myself, or you know, maybe a fan of one of these, you know, NC State. Although I think they're pretty good. I mean, um, a lot of these ACC type schools that aren't going to be able to maybe make the boat. For the, for the new big shiny conference, there's still gonna be excitement around football. It's just how do they break down those lower divisions? And then do you like give those lower divisions like a, a piece of the pie when it comes to whatever the playoff system is? I think if there's a, a carrot to dangle that you can go play the big boys and be the Cinderella, you know, then I think some of these schools that have always had a seat at the table, like the ACC has always had a second team that's gotten into the uh, the New Year's Day bowls and hasn't always done well because one side of the table is not as good. Thank you very much, you know, with the coastal and all that. But like, um, maybe now we're looking at it from the outside, looking in, like some of these these non-power five schools have, and said like, hey, if we can win enough games and if we're good enough in our lower division, maybe we can get into the dance and play spoiler because that's all teams really want, right? I mean, that um, you know, that chance, right? I mean, we know at Virginia, we're probably not going to compete in the, in the, in the playoff in the next five years, but if there's a bigger playoff and we can get in it for 90% of the teams, it just matters if you get in, there's only a couple teams that can win the thing every year. It's going to be fascinating to see how the conferences do shake out. I mean, I, I really think the university of North Carolina is in a phenomenal spot. I, I agree. I think they have so much potential with all of this expansion. Uh, I think UVA is actually in a good spot, and I hope Virginia Tech's in a really good spot. You know, we'll see, because if you think about the markets that those universities are in, and you think about the academic excellence, and let's not fool ourselves, though. Anybody who tells you this is about school is lying. This is right. about money. Yep, This is no about question. brands, and it's about money. Yep. And... I do think, though, that those two universities are in a good spot. Speaking of money, and, and you may – I'm sure you've thought of this, but this may be an impossible question for you to answer. What do you think you could have made in the NIL era if it, if it was available to you? Man, I don't know. Like, um, I would need a baseline. Like, I feel like, you know, a lot of people say – People are always mad at you because of your dad, because your dad played or whatever. They say you made, you know, whatever. You got drafted because your dad, which is all BS, of course. But if if I made a bunch of NIL money, part of that would have been because of my dad. Yeah. You know, and I really do think I would have I would have raked in a little bit. Now, knowing myself, like, I've never been about the money. Now, I've been lucky, you know. Uh, but um, I probably would have tried to be as tasteful as I could. I probably would have got ripped off because I'm bad at saying no. <laughs> like I want to take care of, you know, like I, yep. I want to do something for this, uh, for this, um, you know, diner down the street. Cause I know the guy, like he'd probably take me to the cleaners. I'd probably give him a discount. Maybe I wouldn't have made as much as I could have, but I think I would have made, I think I could have pulled in 250 
Do you think that's high? No, I don't think that's high at all. Not for 500? somebody who was the face of a program in a time when that program was good. Yeah, we were pretty good. And so, we, we had some good pro guys. Everything's context, right? Like life yeah. is context and repetition. And the context for you when you were at UVA is the Cavs, the, the Who's were good. Yeah, and, we, and we were decent. So, yeah, I don't think – I think 250 is very – because what people are forgetting is, like, if – if C.J. Stroud at, at Ohio State, Travis's Buckeyes, so some booster could come to C.J. and go, "Hey, I want to pay you thirty grand or forty grand, fifty grand to come take pictures at Little Junior's birthday party." Right. <laughs> yeah. But they can do that. It's not just like you're representing Ocean City Coffee here. Yeah. It's yeah, so but the much com- more the competition, the competition. There's a lot of sm- rich people don't get rich by by just spending their money, you know. And I think that like. There's a lot of competition in like a Columbus where you're like, well, that dealership will pay him a hundred grand. You know, like, what do I have? What's the going rate? And I think here in Charlottesville, it's probably a little different. Now, I don't want to say we're not willing to pay people uh, in this community. I know there's, you know, if guys come to Charlottesville, I'm sure there's going to be good deals on the table for them. But I, I do think like certain towns, it would have been interesting to see. And Charlottesville, like we got, hey, this is part of the deal now. If you, if you like your program, uh, and you're a fan of the program and you have like a business or you have disposable income, like get in the game, you know, because kids are going to, they're looking to see where they're going to make money. I mean, it's just like anything else now. Like imagine Tebow or Reggie Bush or, I mean, oh my God, these guys would have printed paper. Johnny Manziel. Johnny Man, yes, Johnny In Football. oil money, the oil money down there, dude. Like yes. think about that. It was the perfect storm. He would have made three, f- three to five billion dollars. I, I don't know if that's high, but... No, I don't no, think I, it I is. No, I think that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Was there, like, a local place in Charlottesville that was your go-to spot that would have been a no-doubter for you to have a deal with? Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> yeah. you lived and died with those people. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Wayside Chicken, uh, because in college we'd go... Or, or Mel's. In college we would go tubing a lot on the James River. No. Let's go. At my age, I'm still going tubing a lot on the James River. <laughs> Dude, I saw uh, you passed up some river chicken. What's up with that? Well, it was Dr. Fax, my co-host. I didn't know how long it had been out of the refrigerator, you know. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, but that was a, that was my bad. Looking back on it, I was like 30 yards away, and I was floating downstream, and I was in a kayak, so I didn't want to come back. There were some rapids. It was a big, complicated thing. But I would say, like, I used to get off the river and go straight to Dirty Nell, or not Dirty Nelly's, Wayside Chicken or Mel's, and I would have definitely given them a deal on something. Like, I would have, they would have had to pay me peanuts. I would have just been happy to support. I mean, Dirty Nelly, whatever that is, that sounds pretty interesting. You got to do, Marty, place? you've never been to Dirty Nelly's? No, I'm a Virginia boy. I have not. Okay, so next time you're in town, you just have to text me if you're in town for a game or something. Uh, this is where we need to have a beer. This okay. is the best Deal. bar on game day for sure in Charlottesville. It's like an old, old bar. Divey. Yeah. Does it have a Good. cigarette machine? Oh yeah, in it looks it? like a pub, like a British pub kind <laughs> it of. It does not have a cigarette machine in it because <laughs> I, I don't think that's legal anymore. But there is a porch. Somehow it's legal. Let me tell you, dude. So when I was covering the PGA Championship last month, yeah, or in May, right? Matt Berry, great American, my brother yeah. from, from another at ESPN, he yeah. and I, we're going to go check out the coolest bars in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, we walk into this bar because it has this marquee just blinking that says cold beer. Okay, that's like a beacon in the night for hillbillies like us. Chris, we go in there, and there are these old ladies right by the front door just firing off lung darts. And darts. Like, oh, this is different. And they had an old school cigarette machine. Yeah. Where you like put your quarters in, you pull out the slot, you shove in the slot, and your pack of Marlboro Reds comes out. Yes. We were well, like, there, oh there, my God, it still exists. There's a bar like that in Charlottesville, but I'm not going to snitch. Um, <laughs> and if you come here, I can take you to the SIG bar too. Okay. Because every once in a while, everybody needs to rip one heater at 2 a.m. Just one. And that's the problem with the cigarette machine is they need to sell the Lucy's. They need to just have a Lucy machine. For drunk guys like me who are healthy and otherwise rack, like very athletic, up. right? Just charge five dollars for one cigarette because my drunk ass is gonna put you know I don't even know who's on the five dollar anymore. Is it Lincoln? Who's on the five dollar <laughs> bill? Abe. I'm yeah. gonna put Abe. Still. I'm putting Abe in the slot, dude, for a for a menthol. Especially now, the menthols are going by the wayside. They're trying to take the menthols from us. So that is a travesty. Yeah. 
Hey, by the way, Jeff Passan, you like baseball? Great man. He is a great man. He was on our show. He he smokes American spirits. <laughs> <laughs> That's like his drunk sig. Yes. <laughs> Oh, they're going to kick him out of the baseball fraternity over that, dude. Actually, no. That, that just made him a first ballot you Hall think? of Famer. Okay. Dude, dude, he is in the TSA pre-check line of the okay. Baseball Hall of Fame now okay, because good. of American spirit. Yeah, yeah. See, this is what we need. We need, Chris, what is your uh, your, your power rankings on if you just oh, your man. cigarettes? Uh, Newport. <laughs> um, Number one. Uh Marlboro, number two, but not red. red. Not red. Light, Sorry, Marty. I'm not trying light. to go. I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to go night night. <laughs> <laughs> um, Marlboro red is. It was actually my maybe my first cigarette that me and my oh, buddy that was my first snuck cigarette. out. Dude. Kill you, man! Somebody wanted you dead. We were both 13, dude. He didn't know any better. You know, we just drove as fast as we could in his parents' truck under the power line uh, cut out. And we found a really, uh, a really hot spot in the sun. It was like 100 degrees in the Virginia heat, and we ripped a Marlboro Red. We had to lay in the back of the bed for a solid hour. How much did you puke? Chris, explain the buzz of a first cigarette Marlboro <laughs> Red. It's unrivaled. It's like, um, it's like a, a really heavy lead blanket that also spins you in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never smoked it. I've never smoked what? a cigarette in my life. Good for not you. One puff. I mean, uh, really good for you. There's no, you're not missing much except Travis for the best PSA. ten minutes of your life. So you have the opportunity. All right, you're, who is your greatest? Like, who other than dad? Family yeah. doesn't count. Yeah. Who is like your greatest hero? Oh shoot, man. I mean. I, it's probably it's that dinner table question and he's still alive it's willie nelson dude oh my god yeah. it's probably willie nelson and yeah i have a son named waylon but so how'd that go down was that an internal conflict for you was it between willie and waylon well there's a lot to live up to when your name is willie long <laughs> so so marty not that he wouldn't have but but marty i have a dog named willie for that reason right he doesn't have to go to school and tell people the dog so it's like the reverse boy named Sue. <laughs> so Waylon for me, Waylon is a really cool name. I just love the name. Amazing. And I also like at that point, I think when you look at the highway men, there are stages in your life that you go through and you are all those people for a little while. And in my twenties, when I was just nuts, I was more Waylon and I'm in a Willie stage, man, you know? And so Willie, Willie's probably my hero. Um, I love music and I just, I, yeah, I just, yeah. Highway Men is one of the greatest songs of all time. Which which Great verse song. in the Highway Men is is your favorite? Well, I feel like Johnny definitely stole the show. He got to fly a starship, fly a star dude. Ship. Yeah, he drops the mic. And I, uh, cross the universe divide. I got I mean, chills right now, it's dude. The best. Um, but let's see. I was a sailor. I was born upon the tide. Waylon's uh, is real, real sneaky though. I mean, yeah. Waylon's is about building the Hoover Dam. Which is scary, dude. Being in the bottom of that concrete. I mean, there are dudes there down is. there, dude. Um, I would say, I would say Willie though, because, because uh, just like, just like Willie, like it was such a, it's a very, it's a cool, calm verse, but he also lets you know, like I'm not to be messed with. Cause he, you know, he's uh, um, he he's he's laid a couple folks down along the road, and so I think Willie's is maybe my favorite verse outside of um, outside of Johnny's. All right, a couple more, Wesley. We gotta get this man out of here. You're good, Ben. <laughs> You're totally good. This is, we're on a topic that we're. All right, um, I've been asking people this throughout the summer, and you you enjoy your wet fruit. You enjoy water hydration. I do. Are you a watermelon man or a cantaloupe guy? Watermelon, number one, number one fruit. Watermelon, number um, one fruit. Like period is watermelon. Period. Wow, that's yeah. a pretty controversial take as wow. well. Um, yeah. <laughs> you've now supplanted me. He is all in on. You're all in on water, dude. Controversial take department. I love water. I love staying yeah. hydrated, and and water is a water has a, or watermelon has a lot of. There's a lot of. Um, 
That, read about it. Read about it. It has the more health benefits than you think it does. It does. Yeah. It's yeah, 92%. Exactly. Yeah, but it water. packs a punch, man. It's like a it's like nature's body armor. Just Wait grows till straight they come the out with aquapana infused watermelon. You know they will. And I'll be eating the shit out of it. I'll pay thirty dollars for it. I pay I pay ten dollars for sliced watermelon. You know, yeah. So uh, Chris, we, we have a guest for you. You need to get okay. Ross Chester. Yeah, we just talked to Ross thing. about watermelons. He grew up on a water oh. a watermelon NASCAR farm. Star now. He's won a couple races this year. Extremely aggressive. Doesn't give a damn to dump his mama to win a NASCAR race. And grew up on a watermelon farm, tending to the watermelons. <laughs> That's so good. They, when he wins, he he Gronk spikes a watermelon on top of the car. Who was the comedian that used to do that? Gallagher. Uh, oh, yes. Gallagher, yeah. yeah. He's, He's the Gallagher of, uh, of NASCAR. And is he more hectic than Stenhouse? Uh, well, not... At this point, he is because he's okay. running up front and like okay. his, his positions really matter right now. Yeah, he's, he's trying he's, to figure yeah. it out right now. Yeah, no, I was told if I wanted to have a chaotic favorite driver, I should pick Stenhouse. And Ricky's funny. That's like, what that's what it funny. was. Ross yeah. is real composed. Ricky's yeah. funny. Yeah, I'm a Truex fan, dude. I decided. Yeah, because I met he's him. A great American. Yeah, I met him with with Joe Gibbs before the race. I was like, they just hang out in their uniforms. They're, they're like talking to sponsors and just chilling before they go 200, you know, 20 miles an hour. These guys are insane. They're cool, calm. Martin was really nice. I just ran into him. He was cool as hell. I got the hat and everything now. What was that like oh when you were in the God, pace car at Richmond? It unlocked something primal in me, man. I totally get, <laughs> like, I just, I wouldn't even go in that fast, dude. But uh, to, to drive that fast and just trust that you're not going to flip, like, you never get to do that on the road. You know, and, and going down there, realizing how slanted things are. And they said, this isn't even a big slant where I was, like, at all. Um, I got to hit one of these tracks where where it's like this. I want to really feel the gravity. So anybody that wants me to drop a pace car, like, I drop everything. We got to get, okay, done. Well, done. I'm actually, uh, the, one, one of the uh, NASCAR vice presidents texted me while we're sitting here having our conversation and said he needs to talk to me about the Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway which is extremely banked, and maybe Chris Long should be driving the pace car at hey. the Southern 500. Hey, uh, yes, dude. It was, it was the thrill of a lifetime. And, 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 and everybody in NASCAR is really good about growing the sport. They are. I'll say that, like, they, it was legitimately a first-class experience going down there, man. It was, like, you go to football games, you get lost in the crowd. It's very, like, you know, very closed off. Like I said, you got to meet the racers right before the right before the sh before the race. You know, all the people that work for NASCAR are so friendly and accommodating. I am really not just saying that to kiss y'all's ass to get on another pace car. <laughs> but honestly, as a football player, I was like, damn, this is a really welcoming sport. So I was really excited about that. When yeah, you met Martin, fans. I'd have to imagine that you were extremely taken by the fact that those guys wear fire retarded adult pajama <laughs> onesies. Yes. Imagine if you guys did that in football, <laughs> where like you stepped into a onesie and, and, you're, and you had the pads in your pants and then the shoulder pads were hooked into the... The whole thing and all you had to do was zip up your uniform yeah you don't have a choice then you gotta go you gotta go <laughs> that's it dude you know what i mean so i'm just like i'm pretty impressed with these dudes i say a lot of people say are they athletes i say hell yeah they're athletes you gotta control a 200 and, no question or you gotta control a bowl that's going 200 miles an hour around a, a track and pee in your suit like you're an athlete dude <laughs> It's always funny to me when you see football players who are huddled. Like you got a bunch of assistant coaches on every single corner of the player, and all yeah. of a sudden, that for he's they're there for like two minutes, and then there he just emerges. <laughs> you know what's happening there. Dude. You know what's going down. In there. Yeah, <laughs> peeing, looking at thirty thousand people who are yeah. looking at you. It's you want to talk about stage fright. And all Try. of them have their phones up, just checking you out, dude. They can't see, but but you feel like they can. <laughs> <laughs> they know what's happening. They know. So. Dude, you're a legend. Dude, Marty, uh, so thank grateful you. for your yeah. time and your perspective and your care for others. Uh, it yes, truly sir. is inspiring. We didn't get a chance to get into that. We'll have to have you back on again so we can get deep into your heart because, man, you're a special cat. We Dude, appreciate you. Lucky guy, man. I appreciate you all, and I'll come on anytime. A lot of fun.